Good evening, everyone. My name is Jeff Legros, and I'm the Vice Provost for Global Affairs here at the University of Virginia. It's my privilege tonight to read the declaration for the inaugural Statinius Prize for Global Leadership. Secretary Albright and President Sullivan, will you please join me on the podium? Madeline Albright, your career has been an astonishing record of achievement in academia, government, business, and public service. You are a distinguished scholar of foreign affairs and revered professor at Georgetown University. Your remarkable effort as U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations was a force for individual liberty and justice at a critical time in human history. As the first woman to be appointed Secretary of State, you held the highest office of any woman in America, and you opened opportunities to women everywhere. Champion of NATO, hawk for human rights, and peacemaker in historic conflicts, you have advanced not only the nation's interest, but the well-being of the world. You created and manage an industry-leading global firm that operates in over 100 countries on six continents. Your dedication to the rule of law, freedom, and the common good is unwavering. For these reasons and many more, it is an honor to have you with us this evening to accept the inaugural Statinius Prize for Global Leadership. President Sullivan. Madeline Albright, because of your dedication to intellectual freedom, your service to our nation in the United Nations and as Secretary of State, and for your steadfast commitment to peace and prosperity, it is my distinct honor to present to you, on behalf of the University of Virginia, the Edward R. Statinius Jr. Prize for Global Leadership. Thank you very much, President Sullivan and Vice De Pro Legro, and good evening to all of you. I, I cannot tell you how honored I am and delighted to be at the University of Virginia and so grateful for your very warm welcome and so deeply honored to receive the Statinius Prize. And to all the Statinii that are in the audience, <laughs> uh, it's wonderful to see so much family here uh, as Toysi talked about family, and it's such an honor to be receiving this award with you. You are the future, and I'm so honored to be on, uh, in the same place with you and to get to know you. Thank you so much for your very kind words. Edward Statinius Jr. may not be a <coughs> household name, but his service during World War II and the role he played in shaping the post-war order had a profound impact that is still felt today. Having served in two of the job he once held, Ambassador to the United Nations and Secretary of State, I feel a certain kinship with Edward Statinius. I also understand why his hair went prematurely gray. <laughs> uh, but it was another position as administrator of the Lend-Lease program at the beginning of World War II where um, Edward Statinius had the greatest impact on me personally. And that is because I was a child in England during World War II. My parents and I had fled from our native Czechoslovakia after Hitler's troops marched into Prague. My father served with the government in exile in London. 
Among my first memories are those of sitting with our neighbors during air raids, huddled together in the shelter while enemy bombers flew overhead, waiting for the all clear sound. Our anxieties were heightened because the war in Europe had not begun well, and it seemed that we, who had found refuge in Great Britain, might be left to fight alone. And those feelings began to change in December 1940, when President Roosevelt proclaimed that the United States would be the great arsenal of democracy. The next month, he announced a program, Lend-Lease, to provide military aid to any country whose defense was vital to the security of the United States without insisting on being paid immediately. Under the able leadership of Edward Statinius, the program would provide more than $50 billion in armaments and financial support to Great Britain, the Soviet Union, and 37 other countries. It would also serve as a model for the Marshall Plan and lay the groundwork for the post-war international economic system. I also am very grateful for what he did in establishing the United Nations, because it was the United Nations that made it possible for us to come to this country. My father was the Czechoslovak representative to the United Nations for a new commission on India and Pakistan to deal with Kashmir, and that's how we got here. What I wanted, though, to focus on is to talk more about the Lend-Lease, because it was a crucial turning point not only for America's involvement in the war, but for America's involvement in the world. Faced with the choice between appeasement and preparedness, complacency and victory, we as a nation chose to come to the aid of our European allies. There were those who criticized President Roosevelt under the banner of America First for caring about what was happening in distant lands. But to them, Roosevelt had a forceful response and I will quote from it in full. The United States as a nation has at all times maintained clear, definite opposition to any attempt to lock us in behind a wall. Today, thinking of our children and of their children, we oppose enforced isolation for ourselves. Needless to say, these are words that resonate in our time, an era of anxiety, in which we are once again hearing the siren song of isolationism, even as our close allies in Europe, the Middle East, and elsewhere are under siege. It would be comforting to believe that we can wall ourselves off from the ailments of the world, or that if we simply talk tough, we will never be harmed. But these are illusions. We cannot build security by closing ourselves off for the survival of freedom depends on our strength and the strength of our friends and allies around the world. We're living in a time of endless struggle, driven, as in the Middle East, by ancient rivalries, mutual fears, the lack of economic opportunity, the quest for personal identity, and the passionate but mindless search for revenge. In this environment, our country will need to lead, much as we did during and after World War II by serving as democracy's arsenal. Now is not the time to abandon our friends or undermine our international obligations. If I can convey one message in receiving this truly important prize, it is that we cannot take the world Edward Statinius helped to build for granted. The security of Europe, the continuation of the international order, and America's identity as the shining city on a hill are all being challenged. Each generation is tested and each must choose, and we are facing a very difficult test. But we should remember that we have been tested before and we have prevailed, because even before the United States was a country, it was an idea. We are the inheritors of a tradition that dates back to the architects of human liberty. We believe in the rights and responsibilities of the individual and in the power of each of us to make a difference. We place our faith in a democratic system backed by the energy, ingenuity, and courage of a free people. Those are the ideas that guided leaders such as Thomas Jefferson and Edward Statinius. And I pray that they continue to serve as an example for our nation and its special role in the world. So I'm truly grateful
to the University of Virginia for giving me this honor, but even more importantly, for reminding us what true American leadership is all about. Thank you all so very, very much for your kindness.